Good morning and welcome to Glazing with Amico. This is Kara and today I'm going to be comparing the Chino Chai Gloss SH11 to the PC32 Potter's Choice Albany Slip Brown. These are two glazes that do have a lot of similarities and I have sometimes uh, suggested that if you can't get one or if you're having trouble with one you might want to try the other one. So first I'm going to talk about um, Albany Slip Brown PC32. Um, like the traditional Albany Slip glazes uh, it is a very warm tone glaze and if it's thinner or where it breaks across the surface it'll have um, this really warm brown kind of tone where it's thicker it's more like a, a honey and it's very glossy this is at cone 5 uh, and you can see that it it uh, it's it's very smooth it's very gloss and it does have a little bit of flow where it's thicker one of the fun tricks with this is you can do a little bit thinner show more texture, have more brown, a little bit thicker, and it's more of a creamy color. So you can use thick and thin to enhance different uh, areas. So Albany Slip Brown, it does tend to be a little thick in the jar, so sometimes uh, you have to be conscious of that. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about how to deal with that in a moment. And our second glaze is Chino in the Chino line. SH11 Chai Gloss, which is a very different sort of, of uh, glossy, um, creamy color glaze. It does, it, it's more um, satiny at cone 5. If you want it a little bit uh, glossier, you can run it to cone 6 and it will be a, a higher gloss. But it is, um, like the Albany Slip Brown, it does do uh, thick and thin areas. It's going to be more of a creamy tone where it's thick and brown where it's thinner. You will notice it does not really flow, even where it's kind of thick. Um, it is not going to flow, but it does break brown across uh, edges. So that can be really a, a nice effect if you're looking for something that looks more rustic uh, and uh, you have a textured surface. So I'm going to show you what the cups looked like before they were fired. Move these out of the way. Um, before firing, these were lightly faceted. I did not cut them. I just um, I pressed them with a, I used a, a rib, a rubber rib to make kind of light facets and then push them out as I was throwing. And I used uh, a rib at the foot to kind of push up and give this kind of edge so it caught the glaze from moving further down. So you can see how it, it caught it and then you have uh, an edge of brown and then you have the thicker glaze. So that gives you a sense of what they looked like before. So. In a side-by-side -side comparison, the colors are similar, but not quite the same. Um, the Albany Slip Brown is a little bit warmer toned and, uh, and definitely glossier. The um, Chai Gloss is a little more satiny and, and has a little bit less variation between brown and creamy color. But they're both very nice light color glazes if they're thick enough. If you're getting uh, a dark red-brown with either one of them, the problem may just be that it's not a thick enough application. Both of them are very sensitive to the thickness of application. One thing that I wanted to, I noticed when these came out of the kiln and I wanted to bring up, is you may notice some little tiny holes in the glaze surface. Can you see that? There we go. So this happens with some glazes more than others, and these are not pinholes in the sense of like off-gassing. What's happened is that, as I showed you, the cup, the bisque cup, 
has irregularities in the surface and you can see again with white cup and all these lights it might be hard to see but there are irregularities in the surface it's not a perfectly smooth surface and if you have very tiny openings it can be really hard for the brushing glaze to get into those because it has a high surface tension I have to shake these really good because they are very thick the chai, chai gloss the chino line glazes are fairly thin but Albany slip brown tends to be a little on the thick side so um, my trick if you can if you notice this before firing you can always just um, rub over the raw glaze and try to mash it into that if you can't what I do is put a little water and you can see that Albany slip brown is pretty thick and so what I'm doing is thinning the glaze and notice I'm not adding the water to the jar of glaze I'm just adding it to a separate container and now the glaze is pretty watery and you do not want to glaze your pots with this with this watery mixture because it will not be very thick and you'll spend a, you'll spend a long time putting more and more coats of glaze you can see how thin that is compared to what it was when I first got it out of the jar but I'm going to brush those into those holes and the water is helping to float that glaze in and you see how it it just sunk right in so what happens is the water helps the glaze go into the openings Let's see if I have any more I don't think I do oh. so it helps the glaze go into those openings and once it's in there I can sponge off a little bit make sure I'm not taking too much off now I can just fire it like this but I usually take most of that glaze off so that it's not adding too much and then refire and it'll fill in those openings um, some of the glazes that are prone to this kind of thing are the celadons Albany slip brown does it as well um, so a lot of times people are concerned because they think that they've got some off gassing happening when what's really happening is that the glaze is just really not wanting to go into those openings as I said if the glaze is raw you haven't fired it yet you can just rub over those openings and make sure that the glaze goes in and if you have the opportunity to refire just do this and refire it and it will come out just fine sometimes glazes will move a little bit more when you refire them so be aware of that and then normally uh, I can add this back to my glaze to my jar of glaze but I I'm a little cautious about adding anything to it or thinning the glaze I prefer not to do that so that will just end up going in my glaze uh, uh, dehydrating pot and that's it um, refire and away we go so you know I see one little mark with the chai gloss but that's that's it and you'll notice that even on a white clay the chai gloss gives this look kind of like a, a speckled stoneware which is which can be really nice if you're wanting it to look more earthy and another thing about the chai gloss you'll notice it really does not move this is this is not flowing at all so the the chinos stay in place pretty well and you don't have to worry about um, running unless you are fire 
making them very hot and firing to cone six or up. Or if you're layering with a very runny glaze like a PC, you might have some you might have some movement. But overall, they tend to stay pretty much right where you put them. So they're both really nice base glazes, and they make beautiful um, combinations with other glazes. So I am going to sign off. I know this was a really short one today, but hopefully uh, that was a help. And uh, if you have any other suggestions of things that you would like to see me talk about, um, some of the upcoming uh, videos are going to be um, using TH1 High Fire Texturizer with some of our PC glazes uh, and best practices for using texturizer. Uh, we'll have another layering video with layering PC glazes and uh, we're also going to have a video on um, brushing with different brushes. I know I did